the second game I stuffed hoop number one which gave Jeff a good break and he took nine and I missed the lift and he started his triple peel and broke down at two back and then broke down at one at Rover with both of his hoops and then I took nine and went to the wrong hoop with my second break after he missed and uh, and finished a couple turns later. Well, it's, it's chess, pool, putting and golf all wrapped into one. So if you like card games, anything that has to do with chess, strategy, or something like that, it's, it's addictive. You know, you think you can play it for purely social fun entertainment, but as you, as you get to learn the nuances of the game, it's, it's, it just hooks you. The English are the best players in the world, and for the United States to catch up with them, we need to play the game that they play, which is called the association game. The wickets are extremely tight. It's almost to contact here, and that, that means that the ball basically has no space between it and the wickets to get through. So it's very, very difficult. Wayne Davies, the pro here, and David Bent, a pro down in uh, South Florida, really came up with this idea of a pro-am. I'm here as an amateur, uh, playing with the, or the opportunity to play with the best croquet pl players in North America, including Canada and the United States, and some of the top players in the world. I've been playing at the pro level really since about 2000, um, without much success till 2002. Well, I was playing Leo McBride, who is widely regarded as the best player in North America and one of the very best players in the world. Uh, he also, I believe, just in this last week, won the national championship in golf croquet. The beauty of this game is that if you're playing well, uh, you can beat anyone in the world. I have to address a game like this with Leo, knowing that I'm not going to win unless I play my very best. This year uh, I will end up playing, I believe, 15 tournaments over the year. So you try and uh, basically out-hit the opponent before he out-hits you. It's, it's a very aggressive game and usually at the top level if you get near an end, the end of a tournament, the best players, they might make one mistake. If they make two mistakes, they're usually going to lose. It's all about precision. You're really playing yourself more than you are the opponent in many respects. You just want to go in confident and just play your game and, and don't worry about the competition. If they're a really aggressive player, you might want to try to set up some traps and so on, get them to try a foolish shot. Maybe, maybe it works to your advantage. So that there's that kind of preparation in the short term. Longer term, of course, it's just practice and mental preparation. It's a very mental game, definitely. A matter of learning how to relax under pressure. For me, getting a chance to beat Leo is a big thing. It uh, doesn't happen very often. Um, and I had, uh, at that point in time, missed that penultimate hoop for three consecutive times. Uh, and that's unusual even for me. I usually laugh it off and, uh, and walk away, but I did have a brief moment there where I was pretty unhappy. <laughs> When you get in the top level playing against the best players, it becomes more of a pressure game than anything else. How you handle pressure. 